So in this episode of Friday Five, I wanted to change it up just a little bit because we all know what happened at WWDC. I want to talk specifically about iPadOS 26, but not what it did to us pro-level iPad users, but what it did for the entry-level iPad in that bottom tier in the iPad lineup, and how it completely changed the game because now, for $450, you can have a budget but powerhouse level iPad and computer setup, which is something we couldn't say before. Let's talk about it. So of course, I'm talking about that entry-level iPad, I believe it's the 11th gen, the A16 model, because yes, the pro-level iPad got all these amazing features, and we all thought that this was going to be kind of all tailored towards the iPad Pro, and maybe there'd finally be some sort of separation with operating system between the iPad Air and the iPad Pro, but Apple surprised us all and gave all those amazing multitasking and gesture base and windowing systems to every single modern iPad, including the $350 iPad A16, which is on Amazon right now for less than $300. Now stick around for the end of the video because we will be talking about what it doesn't get because it's not getting every single thing that the iPad Pro is getting, but it's getting all the mainstays. So the first reason why I think the A16 is going to be the powerhouse and best-selling iPad moving forward is because it's getting all this amazing kind of pro level windowing system and window management and multitasking so it's going to be identical to the ipad pro so whether you spend 1300 dollars on an entry level m4 13 inch ipad pro or 300 dollars on the a16 ipad you're getting the same exact experience sure the hardware is better on the ipad pro which it should be for an extra thousand dollars but the overall experience of using the iPad is going to be the same. You have the same windowing system, the same multitasking system, the same gesture control system, the same ability to go between that windowing system and the non-windowing system. You can still have 12 apps open in expose mode. You can still have a bunch of overlapping windows. You can still have all the different things that came with the file system, like being able to put files into your dock and being able to manage them with different colors. So the iPadOS 26 experience has completely changed how I look at the iPad A16 specifically. And that's a great segue into reason number two why I think this is a powerhouse, and it's because of that A16 chip. That A16 chip is the same chip that's in the iPhone 15, so think about that for a second. All the stuff that Apple came out and touted when the iPhone 15 first came out and how powerful it was is still in that iPad. So it's going to be fast enough for your light video editing in LumaFusion, for some Lightroom edits in when you are editing some photos or just managing on the photos application yourself. It's got fantastic efficiency from a power usage perspective and battery life is second to none on those entry level iPads. And that's powerful enough to handle all that multitasking smoothly. Now, of course, we are in beta one, so it's a little bit choppy. I mean, it's even choppy on the iPad Pro to a certain extent, but that will change as the public beta comes out later in July and then finally in the fall when it comes out to the entire public again for $300 that thing is an absolute beast especially because it's gonna be much more computer like moving forward so now let me tell you how you can get all this for under $450 because of course through the first party kind of accessory market if you go to apple.com the iPad entry level for 128 gigs of storage is gonna cost you 350 then you have that magic keyboard folio which I believe is $250 which is kind of insane for the price and then you also have an Apple Pencil USB-C, which I believe is $80. So that's gonna cost you about $680 without including any tax. But if you go a different route, for instance, you get it on Amazon, it's $299 for the same exact A16 entry-level iPad with 128 gigs of storage, save yourself $50. And then the big money saver is going to be the third party equivalent, which is going to be the Logitech Combo Touch as a keyboard and trackpad accessory. And this is the only other third party accessory that still uses pin connectors to connect to the iPad, giving you the same one to one experience on the trackpad from a software perspective. Sure, the Magic Keyboard Folio might be a little bit more tight in terms of actual hardware and material choices, but if you just want the best experience possible at the cheapest price point, and then finally, depending on who you are, most people don't need kind of the precision of the Apple Pencil, so you can go with a third-party stylus that's $30, like the one I have linked below, and it's going to give you 98% of the experience with palm ejection and tilt sensitivity and being able to do everything that you do with the Apple Pencil, and it doesn't have some weird charging situation because, again, the entry-level iPad can still use the first-gen Apple Pencil, which the charging situation is absolutely absurd. So for under $450, you essentially have a full-fledged computer that has access to the entire Apple App Store, which is millions of applications, and you can use it in a bunch of different environments. And it still has the versatility of the iPad, which we've grown to love over the years. So again, for $450, this is gonna be my number one recommendation to a bunch of different people, no matter the situation that you're in. 
And now the fourth reason why I think this is going to be an amazing setup is because, again, now with the new windowing system, the way the dock works, the way that the multitasking works, the way that they've kind of changed all the settings and the menu and being able to kind of use it with the new taskbar menu at the top, it's much more Mac-like. So the transition going over from Mac OS over to iPad OS is a lot easier moving forward. Sure, there's a couple of applications and I have another video coming out on Saturday of all the things still missing about iPad OS 26 when compared to Mac OS, but definitely keep in mind that for most people, for 95% of people, this new iPad OS 26 experience is gonna be more than enough computer for all of your needs, depending on what you're using it for on a daily basis. So this is gonna be a great personal computer for you to manage your finances at home, manage your home calendar, run your own business, depending on what it is, being able to game on it, being able to use it as a note-taking device, but then also it feels like a Mac experience, especially when compared to Mac OS 26, which has gotten even more iPad OS-like, one could argue. And the final reason I wanted to bring up why this is such a powerhouse or why I think this is going to be the most recommendable iPad is because it's an entry point and an access level to the Apple ecosystem. So at $300, even if you don't get the Magic Keyboard replacement or the Combo Touch or whatever the case is, you still have iPadOS 26, you still have the windowing system, you still have iMessage, you still have the settings, you still have iCloud, you still have AirDrop, you still have Universal Control, you still have everything that comes with the Apple ecosystem and all the good that comes with it all for $300, which is something that not a lot of people can say. But now, again, you still have to remember this is the entry-level iPad, this is not an M-powered iPad, so there are a couple things missing. Firstly, there's gonna be no Apple intelligence features whatsoever. Again, right now, in this moment, that's not a big deal. Apple's making a lot of promises again that it's gonna get better and it's gonna get more useful, but until then, I wouldn't really hold my breath for Apple intelligence and its use cases, but just know that if that update does come out, this A16 iPad will not be able to get that update. Secondly, there is no extended monitor support, so all the windowing management and windowing systems that I keep talking about can only happen on device. You can technically plug it into an external monitor, but it's just going to mirror your iPad. You cannot have an external display or a way to have stuff on your iPad while having it on your display, so definitely keep that in mind. And then lastly, it doesn't have Stage Manager, which for me is totally fine because I no longer use Stage Manager. I'm just using the windowing system. But again, just do keep in mind that there are some limitations and some asterisks when it comes to using iPadOS 26 on the entry-level iPad. But in my opinion, those are a wash because everything that you get out of it for only $300 is an absolute no-brainer. So again, under $450, I'll leave that setup linked down below. But let me know in the comment down below what you think. Do you think the entry-level iPad is good enough to now be kind of like a personal at-home computer or a throw-around computer that can do a lot more than just be a content consumption machine? Or do you think you still want to gravitate towards an M-powered iPad Air or an M-powered iPad Pro and you think that the downfalls and maybe the material choices of the iPad entry level are not good enough or maybe you do like Apple Intelligence for some reason? Let me know in the comment down below if you think the entry level iPad is now kind of looked at differently because of iPadOS 26. But that'll do it everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I knew you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more stuff about iPadOS 26, we have an abundance of videos that we've released this week. Highly recommend checking them out. But until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.